I just want to tell you about a story that um, is about 14 years old, and it's really taken me about this long to share it. In fact, a lot of my uh, immediate family doesn't really know this, all the details of the story, but for some reason, I have a burning desire to share it now. So thank you for uh, indulging me. Okay, sorry about that. Maybe I need this after all, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, trains and planes and automobiles and cars have taken me to about 47 states and 25 countries. So I can tell you that I am certifiably a travel junkie and I am a travel snob. I love to travel and I like to do it in a really smooth way. I like to be cool about it. But this trip that I'm going to tell you about has humbled me and it took me to my knees and it really was a trip with a mission and it started with a wish. So my husband has Ukrainian background and he said, honey, I have this burning desire to go to Russia. Ding, 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 I start thinking, okay, he just issued me a challenge. We're gonna go to Russia. And then as time went on, we'd been married about seven years, we didn't have any children and we kind of were feeling a void. We we're traveling, working, and we really wanted children in our life. So we decided this will be a dutiful trip. We will see Russia and we'll adopt a child. So fast forward, we um, landed in Moscow and our reception there was chilly. I would say cold as Lenin's tomb. And what I mean by that is my husband went through customs in front of me. And the next thing I knew, I was alone. No one would speak to me in English. For three freaking hours, I sat there wondering why, what is going on? And I really didn't know. And finally, the jet lag kind of wore off and I was just like, you know what? I'm going to cry. And I don't do that ever. I mean, for years and years, I, nothing makes me cry. I burst into tears. My son is waiting for me. They looked at me, put me through. So <laughs> I thought, OK, I don't know what that was about. Later, I found out they wanted a bribe because there was a discrepancy on my passport. So we went on, on our trip, and we found out that if you um, try on fur hats in Red Square, it's very expensive. What I mean by that is that it cost us $1,000 to try on red, um, fur hats in Red Square because a very slick pickpocket grabbed my husband's wallet out of the front of his pants while we were having a really good time and a carefree moment. And before we knew it, $1,000 had been charged on our credit card. And we were in Russia. So fortunately, our credit card company was very forgiving, and they allowed that to go by. So we went on to southern Russia. Taganrog is the city where our son was born. And we met him. He was beautiful. He looked a lot like my husband. And we were just in awe. But we had to wait 40 days to finalize this adoption. So they said, go home and come back. I'm like, well, that just sounds like really simple, but you know it isn't. It would be the longest 40 days ever, and it truly was. So we thought, okay, in our Western minds, we're gonna try to circumvent this issue that happened on the front end of our trip, and let's talk to someone at the airport. Let's ask them if we can avoid this problem, leaving the country. Well, that's where we found out the difference between East and West. So. We went to an airport official's office, and faster than you can say Vladimir Putin, this guy says to us, you will pay 100 US dollars or you will stay in Moscow. <laughs> we looked at each other incredulously. What the F is this all about? So um, we thought for, about it for about three seconds, and we said, I think we'll pay this money. Fortunately, we had $100 because I've been on some trips where I've had like maybe a coupon for a fast food burger in my pocket at 10 cents, and I had a $100 bill. So that was behind us, and we headed off to the airport lounge. And this was something I didn't know was going to be on my bucket list, 
but I had my first buzz on an airplane. We tried Baltica number nine, Nastrovia. We toasted to Russia, our anger and our frustration. And we said, my God, we have to come back here in 40 days. We have a problem. So we, um, I got a new passport because they didn't like the note that said my maiden name and my married name were two different names. So we went back thinking the problems are now behind us. Ha, 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 ha. Second ship. Then we got there and um, we had our, uh, our hearing and we finalized our adoption, which would have been a, a really wonderful celebration, except for, I would say, um, it went from shotchka to plotchka, which means laughing to crying, when we found out in the wake of 9-11, they were not going to wait the 10-day period that we had to wait. So I said, honey, I've lived out of the country. Go home. I'll be fine. I'll stay with the host family. So I learned about the area where my son was born. I celebrated his first birthday with him, which was a beautiful moment. I saw my um, host family had this beautiful uh, cellar where they had canned goods stacked from the floor to the ceiling, honey and all kinds of canned things. I found out that their ancestors lived in a chicken coop during the Russian War while soldiers lived in their house. And I was just amazed by all this information. So I thought, okay, this is gonna be smooth sailing now. Andre and I got on a flight to Moscow. Before I knew it, a guy sat down beside me, started breathing alcohol in my face, and he said, I am former KGB. You will come to my house. I thought, holy mother of God. I cannot believe this is happening to me. What am I going to do? I started to pray because I was truly scared. I had a baby. And then um, what happened was the angels were watching over me because they all, um, everyone on that plane stopped that guy from getting off the plane. They detained him, and they made a space so I could run through to my guy crying. Oh, my God, I was almost kidnapped. And then I flew home thinking, all right, I'm back on terra firma in the U.S., and I'm so happy to be here. And um, I found out that my flight from JFK to Baltimore had not been confirmed by the agency, so I didn't have a flight. I got on the phone to my dad, and I cried. At this point, tears were really flowing pretty easily for me. And I said, Dad, I've been out of the country 14 days. Keith is in Baltimore waiting for me. Please come and get me. The airport people looked at me. They got me on that flight. And then I came home. My son was waving an American flag. And I could have just kissed the ground. I was never so happy to be an American and so proud and so glad that I didn't have to live under the um, thumb of the Russian mafia. <laughs>